everybody. Welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags. It's Kiwi Week, courtesy of Corona, still hanging around, which we kind of wish it would go away. Uh, Kiwi Week, the challenge last night was thrown out by Dame Nolene Tarua to hunt down the infamous Donna Wilkins, formerly Lothagen. When she said that, a little bit of a shiver ran through my body because I had a memory of watching Donna in the early days and she simply frightened me as a player. So I decided to get the boxing gloves out, put on the kit like I look like a boxer and a hoodlum and I rang you and you answered the phone, you bugger. Good job, ladies and gentlemen, Donna Wilkins. Woo! Hi. <laughs> See, I'm not that scary, am I? No, yeah, no, I'm shitting not myself. So <laughs> How are you going? I'm good, and you? Yeah, actually, to be honest with you, this Gordy's Gas Bags has been a revelation because uh, beyond that, lost all work, as many people did in the land of sports, so not a lot happening. So this has been terrific catching up with all you old farts. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy that we're that old, isn't it? <laughs> it's a worry. It didn't actually feel that long ago that I was running around the court, but now that I'm sitting here at home and homeschooling my kids, I'm feeling my age. So you're on a deer farm, aren't you? You live on a farm down in Bacargo Way, is that right? Um, yeah, so we're about an hour and a quarter from Invercargill. Probably easier to say we're halfway between Invercargill and Queenstown. Um, yeah, we do farm deer, but we do pretty much a bit of everything. So we crop, got sheep, um, and a couple of dairy farms. So I haven't seen my husband. It's just like a normal day because he's an essential worker. So he goes to work every day. Yeah, so I was going to say, has COVID... I mean, it's affected you because you just said you're homeschooling. So it's affected every parent around the world when homeschooling yeah. come into existence. But life has been pretty normal then for you guys? Well, kind of normal in the sense that Mike still gets up and goes to work, but I get nothing done all day because <laughs> I'm going from... We don't have great internet connection on the farm, so... I think my son tried to download three minutes of reading for his teacher and it took over two hours. Um, so I basically pop from one child to the next and try and keep the, the devices charged up and the internet running. Um, and then, you know, talking to people online. And I think we had a chat for three hours last night with some of my netball buddies. So... Right, it's good, isn't I think it? The whole house was in bed and I was still chatting. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. <laughs> it's funny, actually. I think that's something that's come out in its abundance since ISO. It was all these netball gangs? Like, it's so much harder for us to all catch up because we live at a distance. But gee, mm. we should have really thought about this Zoom scenario and and house party and everything a long time beforehand. It's quite simple. It's frightening how simple it is. Yeah, it's really simple, but we never had to use it, did we? Mm, so correct. we just didn't, but now we are. And it'll be interesting, I guess, how much people use it when we're allowed near people, whenever that may be. I know. It's, yeah, weird. Weird and wonderful times. Hey, do you do anything in the farm? Like, do you go out and are you, like, hands-on? Um, Not really, because my husband pretty much runs the operation so he's not as hands-on anymore with the stock uh when i first started dating him i did used to go out in the deer sheds but we had to um the three kids and i had to be essential um service for one day we had to do 14 hours of work with an et program for Heinz. so um we had nine vets and vet nurses doing, operating on you know about 100 Heinz. so we were 14 hours straight work so that was oh, quite entertaining god i don't think i'd cope <laughs> I, i'm a city girl i don't think i'd cope at all i do love new zealand how you all have your spa I like the space a lot of you living out just beautiful it's like what a beautiful country you're very bloody lucky oh we are and more so now you know like i'd hate to be cooped up in an apartment with no grass and you know we can go out and go through paddocks and paddocks of farm and you know not see anybody and you know even just going for a run around the block or whatever or a bike ride we don't see anybody other than our workers so it's um we're very lucky I don't think we would cope if we <laughs> had our four walls and nothing else are you still do you still keep fit do you still go out for you just said go running is that you or is that the kids and you on the bike uh, no, I'm running and they're on the bike, but oh. I can't keep up with them. So I'm pretty much running and they're racing to get home. But I hurt my Achilles still trying to play netball last year. So it's taken a while to come right, but I'm trying to run, but I'm not very good at it. I could <laughs> do something because I drink too much wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a great balance, isn't it? Hey, um, 
what well, you're a you're a big tennis fan, aren't you? You you go do you go to the Australian Open every year? I, I don't I, go every year, but I like to go and I've been to all the Grand Slams, but the Aussie Open is the best one. It's the and, easiest to get tickets and Melbourne's such a cool city. Um, so that was our last trip and it's probably our last international trip for a long time. So it was cool to get over. Um, and luckily the Australian Open was still on um, with all the fires and obviously the devastation there with that and the smoke and, and everything else, but had a really good week. Of course, it got very, very hot into the 40 degree in the last few days that we were there. But yeah, it was awesome. Why, why tennis? Do you love Roger Federer? Yes, I do. I think he's amazing. And to still be competing at his age and at his level was huge. You know, everyone says he should retire, but he still, you know, makes the semis of Grand Slams. Doesn't mm. necessarily win a lot over the last few years, but um, he still is a huge threat and just the people when he plays against them always rise to the occasion which is huge and so I do like him but I just it's just such a cool sport it's so mental and it's just you and your own emotions and I just think it's amazing some of these players and even you know the younger ones coming through I was never really very good at it I didn't well, have the patience I was, I was <laughs> just gonna ask and you what do you like Serve backhand. I, can hit them. I used to play, but my mum did say to me, "Why do you want a tennis racket? Can you even hit a ball?" And I was like, "Oh, that's a bit harsh." But so I got a tennis racket and I played every Saturday just so I think, to prove a point. Um, but no, I wasn't wasn't very good at it. I like the team sports more for me. <laughs> well, let's talk about let's go back because honestly, you've got an extraordinary story to tell. But let's go. You were. 18 bloody years of age when you played your first game for New Zealand. That is young. Yeah, and when I look at the photos that are going around on Facebook at the moment, I looked very young. I was so young and very green and just liked playing the game, so I was probably lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Um, I represented Canterbury quite young, so I'd already been playing for a couple of years um, at that sort of provincial level. Yeah, but... It was pretty scary too because I got in the silver ferns and then I broke my heel, so I had to pull out. So I didn't play. I got in, I think, for a series at the end of the year. Had to come and play against Australia for my first test. I was shitting my pants. <laughs> we got that, six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so for those that don't, well, everyone probably does know, but let's just. So you're a dual international because you went on to play basketball for the Tall Ferns as well. So let's go back. Did you play both sports growing up or was it netball and then you transferred? Which which came first? No, I played both. So right through, I actually played basketball first because we were allowed to play um, earlier at a younger age in basketball before netball. So my mum actually played both. So I guess, you know, when the opportunity came to play, I, I could. Um, but I represented basketball first um I made the national team and the tall ferns team it was just called the New Zealand women's basketball team then in 95 and then made the ferns and for netball in 96. Did you at the back side of it can you look back and go you loved one more than the other? Oh I knew all the way through my career I always enjoyed basketball more um and that's probably why I was able to play both because I ended up having a couple of coaches that wanted me to still play netball. So they knew that they probably had to work with me on that just a little bit because there was a lot of toing and throwing and, you know, tours that I'd get off one plane and get on another or I'd have to miss one um, because I was away. So, you yeah, know, basketball was my pick if I had to pick one. Um, probably because you could do so much more. You had to be able to defend and shoot and you know, have the ball skills and do everything, whereas netball's, you know, obviously more specific to your position. I've always described in netball uh, the three areas of the court, and a few people do, but I always have said that the defenders are the bulldogs, the midcourt have the brains, and the shooters are the princesses. But you <laughs> stuck my entire rationale up. Sorry. <laughs> because... And, and, and in actual fact, I love it. I had this discussion with Sherelle McMahon the other day. I don't think she was thrilled. but And she did have a bit of bulldog in her. But you you were the bulldog of the goal circle. <laughs> and I mean that really nicely. Like, I, I, I loved watching your aggression and your, like, it just, it was a never-say-die attitude. Yeah, and, and it's kind of hard because everyone has that perception of when I play and what I do on the court and 
I'm so probably not like that when you get to know me off the court. But when I step onto a court, I'm there to, to win the game and do whatever I can to win. I get my expressions handed down from my father, so he's exactly the same. Um, so I can't do anything about that. But when I'm on court, I'm, I'm just there to win. And I think, too, I was probably one of the attacking players that got stuck in on defence and tried to turn the ball back over when I lost it or I missed a goal or um, that sort of thing And when it come down to the game. And that's maybe a bit of my basketball nature coming out on me um, in my through my game and netball. Yeah, and you... I was going to say, for me, in the going back in the early eras, you really stood out as someone that turned... Because you transferred from goal shooter to goal attack, but you stood out as someone that really set the bar for how hard a goal attack should work defensively. Like Because I think for such a long period of time, and as in the early days of netball, if you were a goal shooter, you just shot and that was it. You know, you didn't... Get to play <laughs> yeah. And I mean that nicely to everyone that's watching. Don't write in and tell me anything otherwise. But... <laughs> But you, you did, you, and, and that came from your basketball background. Oh, absolutely. And I guess, in fairness to all the goal shooters, you don't have a lot of time, and especially now, the mm. game's so fast, you don't have a lot of time to turn over the ball defensively. It's sort of out of that third, whereas at goal attack, you have a bit more time to kind of get back to come forward for an intercept. And I used to be so angry with myself most of the time when I turned over possession that that's why I ran around like a mad thing trying to get it back. Um, you know, your job is there to shoot and get the goals in. So when you miss one, yeah. you know, you do have to try and get it back. Well, speaking of Bulldog, I want to take you to a, a back to a particular game against uh, playing, I think it was National Bank Cup, but when you played against um, a former Aussie captain by the name of Catherine Harvey-Williams. <laughs> yeah. Remember the clash? Yeah, I do, because that's all everyone went on about. It was unreal. I mean, I love. Well, I don't even think it was that bad, was it? I don't think it was as bad as when Laura Geitz need me in the back on purpose. Oh, that was gold, wasn't it? <laughs> so I mean, you can go back to so many different situations in games in netball, and sometimes it's a rush of the blood. And I will say that was probably a bit of a rush of the blood, but I, you know, and if I probably look back on it and watch the clip, you know, was it really as bad? you know, when you look at a lot of things that happen on a netball court, but um, it was probably just a, a rush of blood um, to the head and wanting to get the ball back. And and that's what happens when you get on a netball court. And, and you know, I didn't intend to <laughs> smash her. Yeah. Um, but again, that happens. And hopefully she doesn't completely hate me for it. But um, I guess I was just caught up in the game as, as we get. As well, maybe Laura got with me. Well, and I was going to say, you know, like you take that incident uh, back then and you place that incident in today's game. And in a oh. lot of ways, it's a dime a dozen, isn't it? Oh, well, when you look now and the clashes that players have, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah, like it wouldn't even probably scratch the surface and we wouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah. But... Um, I guess because it cost, uh, happened, what, 30 years ago? No, <laughs> 20 maybe, I don't know. Um, feels like a long time ago. Yeah, you're right. It probably wouldn't even feature today. And there's a lot. So it's so physical now because it's so fast. Yeah, correct, correct. It's even commentating a game. Like, you know, when, when I get into the start of a season and I commentate the very first game, I feel like I'm, I've got to catch up. Like, it's happening so mm -hmm. quick. You've almost, I've got, got to get my rhythm happening to call a game because it's extraordinary how much the game's, you know, gone in the last however many years. Hey, what, um, Robin Broughton, I love Robin. Yeah. And I know you and Robbie are great. Yeah. And I know you're good mates. Tell, tell me, just tell me about that relationship. Um, well, obviously I've had Robbie coach me for, oh gosh, a number of years. Um, I first came down south from Christchurch to Invercargill in 1997. I signed a three-month contract <laughs> and I'm still here, so it's the <laughs> longest three months. Um, but she wasn't coaching that team. That was just for Southland. Um, but she coached a club team. So she'd already got Benice Minnie down and convinced Bernie to ring me and get me down. And then in 1998, the Southern Sting started. So, of course, Robbie coached me for those 10 years. Um, then we moved into the steel, but I was pregnant um, 
with my first child, so I didn't play that year. So I was assistant coach with Rob, which was a very different insight when she's not used to having assistant coaches, let alone a player um, that she'd coached for so long. But then, of course, I ended my career playing in the, with, with the ANZ um, up in Wellington when Robbie went up there to coach the Pulse. And that was really a nice feeling to go up there and finish under her. And now Robbie has moved to Wanaka and we actually have a place in Wanaka too, which is probably only about maybe a five or 10 minute walk from her. So we catch up frequently and she is an amazing lady that has huge knowledge and passion for the game of netball. And yeah, I have a lot of respect for her and what she's done for the game and what she's done for me. When, when you went up to Wellington to finish with your netball as such there, I imagine, was it an easy decision, like when Rob rang? Yeah, it was really. Um, obviously, I had started a family, so I had Cooper, and then I could come back and play, so that was fine to still play in Invercargill. And then Robbie had a bit of a sort of, not really a setback, well, it was in a way because she's so loyal, and I don't think that she really wanted to go somewhere else to coach, but that's just how it panned out for her. So she found herself up in Wellington. Um, I had Jack, our second child, and went to the tactics because my mum was there. That's where I grew up. So I actually had one season there before getting pregnant with Maya. And I think I had about 10 weeks. I had to have a C-section for her. I didn't have a choice because both the other two were emergency C-sections. So not easy births. And the pulse didn't think I'd be able to get back in time to play and fair enough. So I didn't go that year and I re-signed with the steel. So although Robbie was up in Wellington, I didn't get to play there and follow till the next year. But um, yeah, it was a no brainer. Just wanted to finish. I knew I only had one or two years left in me. Um, I was too busy running around after three toddlers, let alone do the training for netball. Um, but it was really cool up there, and Wellington's such a cool city. So uh, we had a ball. Yeah, I, I, I have such. I've had some great conversations with Robin. Very fortunately, over time, I just think she's a wonderful lady. She's well, is she? She's going good. Yeah, she's good. Uh, um, building a house at the moment, which is a bit stressful. And I rang her a few weeks ago, and she was in isolation for fourteen days because she had been near somebody that was near someone that had COVID. So it was a bit of a drama. And then um, we haven't been allowed to go to Wanaka. So I just have to wait till we can travel over there again. And um, because it's about two and a quarter hour drive, then we can catch up again. So we're just waiting for that opportunity, really. With the steel, seven, was it seven titles in 10 years? Yeah. So we made every final and won seven. So pretty amazing record. We had a reunion actually, uh, it'll be two years, I think, this July, and it was amazing. We tried to get as many players um, and management uh, and the board members together for a dinner, and we actually played a game against our young Beko team to a packed stadium in Invercargill, oh, really? which was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. It was pretty bloody sore after it, but um, <laughs> I want to know it what was the cool. Was. Oh, we won by one. <laughs> we were down by. Oh, I think we're down by eight and Robbie started getting very serious on the sideline. And then we come out and went mad and the crowd went mad and yeah, we won by one. I think the Becco girls weren't that happy about it, but it was pretty cool. It's a good lesson. And and funnily enough, through these Gordy's gas bags and chatting with, with some of the Aussie girls, and some of them are so bloody fit still, Shelly O'Donnell. You can't get her off a netball court. She's still playing to this very day. Wow. I know, I know. I'd love to get them out in the team and just have a little bit of a, a lesson to some of the, the young ones coming through because, you know, you guys have still got brains. Your bodies mightn't work, but your brains still go at 100 miles an hour. But that's the problem. We think that we can still do some of it and we throw balls that we're never in a million years going to get. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would have been fun. Did anyone film it? I want to see it. Um, I think there's a, I don't know if we filmed the whole lot, but there was a wee bit and there was the odd clip on the news, I think. Um, yeah, like it was a big, because we've never, ever got together. Um, and it was 20 years since the first year. So I actually thought that it'd be a good idea to get a hold of everyone and mm. do it. And it ended up in a big fundraiser. And we, oh, I'm not sure how much we raised in the end and gave a big check to the Tanya Dalton Foundation, which uh, was, which was pretty that. awesome. 
Yeah, that's terrific. Well done. Love send our love to Tun's family and always thinking of her. What a great commentator and person she was. Let's go to uh, let's go keep with netball for the moment and let's head to uh, the World Cup. You know, I have to speak to you about it. Go for it. <laughs> how, many, how many times have you spoken about the moment? Oh, whenever anyone wants to talk to me, which seems to be every time someone interviews me or does anything, because they obviously think that it's going to break me. But No, it's um, not. You think I want to talk about you missing the goal. I don't. I want to talk about when you walked over and the camera came on you, dropped the F-bomb. No, a- don't remember that. <laughs> Was that before or after I missed the shot? Ah, oh, you know, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, 99. Yeah. Oh, look, and you have, but the thing is, you have to have moments in sport like that to make you better, and not only on the court, but as a person. And I think one thing that I learned from that experience in 99, and I was still pretty young, um, you know, like I was devastated because my job is to shoot the goals. Um, I'd shot the goals and did all the shooting in nearly every other game in that tournament, and we only just bet. Jamaica in the semi-finals and to be perfectly frank if it wasn't for how I performed in that we wouldn't have been in the final but of course everyone focuses on the you know the miss and we were up by six too in that last quarter I don't think I touched the ball for the first seven minutes in that last quarter um, and actually if you look at the tape there was no three feet in that defending of that shot but <laughs> very <laughs> true very true yeah very true it, but hey, you know, I, I do like silver better than gold and I've got a lot of Commonwealth Games silvers. <laughs> yeah, it's the, great, it's the great joke of New Zealand, isn't it? That the silver ferns enjoy a, a bit of silver. But anyhow, we won't go there. I want to move on to the longest recorded game in netball history, the Commonwealth Games, double over. Oh. So I was chatting, with, I had a chat with Shirazzle Dazzle, I mentioned before, uh, about this game in last week on Gordy's Gas Bags. And she, she just said it was the most exhausting thing ever. Did she say that it shouldn't have gone into extra time for no. the second time? Well, do you honestly think she's going to say that? <laughs> Why? Well, Why? It should have, but it shouldn't have. Because like, I'm saying that, like, and we would have lost. Well, we did lose, but then for somehow, I, don't, I still can't work out how we went to extra time again because... Something happened with the clock, or I'm not sure what it was. And I actually think that Australia were up by two when the time was up, but something happened, and then all of a sudden they weren't up by two and we scored. And then we went again, we keep going. It just was never ending. What, what was happening on your bench? Were they just going crazy? Look, that was still a long time ago 98. Um, no, 2002, mm. wasn't it? Yeah, 2002. Yep. Um, so it's a long time ago. I I just remember from that game that it was a long game and also that I believe that Australia had already won it and it should have ended, but it just kept going. <laughs> but it makes for fun, isn't it? Well, it would have been amazing to watch. Yeah, it's the highlights reel just until something else goes pear-shaped in one of our upcoming games. But anyhow, listen, 90. so you played 95 games with the Tall Ferns. You did two Olympics? Yeah, I did Sydney um, in 2000 and Athens in 04. And then for basketball, I did the 06 Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. So that was a bit of a faux pas, though, because I picked basketball that year. And I think, didn't the Silver Ferns win in Melbourne? They got gold. So maybe it was me. Maybe I should have spun to basketball earlier. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it up. I'm, ala- I'm, I'm glad. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I actually remember, because you came back, did you play with, was it Canberra? Yeah, I came over. I had a couple of stints with Canberra. Um, we actually won the 06, 07 championships. Yeah. Um, we won the WNBL that year, which was awesome. Canberra was, was fun. Coach, Kerry Graff. Yes. Champion. Yeah, She's unreal, actually, and she come over. She had a stint coaching us in the Tall Ferns as well, and she's just an amazing lady, and her passion and knowledge for the game, and 
and the drive to get the best out of you. Like she, you can't slack with her around. Crikey, she's on your toes and, and she makes you better. She makes you better for it. And, you know, you train hard with Graffy. Crikey, if netballers think they train hard, they haven't, they haven't met Carrie Graff. Yeah. And, and so, so cause what are you saying, like, is basketball the tougher game because it's physically tougher or is it tougher mentally or? I don't know if it's actually tougher because I think netballers train really hard um, in what they do and, and you've just got to be so quick and, you know, your thinking's got to be pretty sharp and tactically um, for netball. But for basketball, I guess you have to be a bit more all-rounded at everything mm. um, to succeed. Uh, see, I was pretty pretty good at defence. Um, I could shoot the ball in basketball, but I probably would pass to the person that was better if they were open than take everybody on myself so defensively and rebounding like I led the rebounding at the Athens Olympics and mm. you know that was probably my strongest part of the game and whereas I didn't get a lot of opportunity in netball because I was a shooter to do that whereas in basketball I did. Tell me about some of your um, silver fern like some of the some of the players that you've played alongside that like just champions because I I sort of look <clears throat> like I kind of I thought about should I do this Kiwi week and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many, like, such champions. The same as in Australia. I've gone back through the history and I'm looking at all these people to chat with. But, I mean, you played with some absolute guns. Like, you know, Benice Mead, oh, yeah. that's an example. Like, I mean, in, as a young kid coming through, I, I, I just, and, and learning about, okay, the international game in New Zealand. I mean, Benice just stood out for me. Uh, look, I guess... As Australians, you guys are probably lucky that she had really bad knees because <laughs> if she had to keep going for a few more years, like, honestly, she was amazing. And I guess uh, Bernie's a really good mate of mine and she was pretty much all I knew about netball at the beginning because I used to have to play against her when, you know, she played for Hearts, I played for St. Nick's and then we played Canterbury together and then she got me down south. So... I had to play against her at training, so probably what made me a better player because every training I had to come up against Benice Minnie. Mm. Um, I was very fortunate I didn't have to play against her internationally, like you guys, against us, but um, it's just amazing. And she doesn't do a lot now, obviously, with her knees and everything. Um, but when she came out for that reunion game, she's like, oh, Johns, I'll just play a quarter. Well, I couldn't get her off the court. <laughs> and she was pulling out intercepts. And um, so I think she played a couple of quarters. She, she yeah. couldn't walk for weeks and her knees swelled up. But um, what a legend. Yeah. And an amazing family too. Like all of her family, like Nathan, her younger brother, was really good at basketball and high jump. And, you know, Chris going um, in the athletics as well. And amazing parents. Um, really neat family. Were you unbelievably proud watching Dame Nolene Tarua and the Silver Ferns win that World Cup? I was because of how far, I guess, the Silver Ferns had slumped. Um, and to see the girls get the love of the game back and just do the basics and just play netball and have fun. Um, and that's what Knowles brought in to the team. And it was so cool because um, Knowles had got a few of us oldies back on board and we were doing a few specialist sessions. Um, and so you got to see the players grow. And we I've never watched so much netball in my life as what I did that year. Um, you know, <laughs> I had to watch every A and Z game so I could work out what players needed to work on or, you know, improve on or do better or, you know. And so I was watching so many netball games. Um, so to see how far they grew, um, especially Amelia Ran, mm. she was phenomenal and probably, well, I believe the reason why the Silver Ferns did so well, She, I thought she had a fantastic World Cup. Oh, she was incredible incredible her resolve was just unbelievable I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I have a great little background in history with Amelia Rano as head coach at the AIS when she was based up in Queensland and we gave her a phone call and said come down and she didn't want to leave so we, we'd bring we'd fly her in and out just here and there and you yeah. could see this kid was going so we so it's been it's been so lovely to watch her uh, her journey and now to be the new captain is what a, I know it's cool, eh? Such, and, and well earned, I think, and especially through, you know, it was a pretty tough time. I guess 
with the silver ferns, there was no pressure on them at that World Cup. You know, they only had to make the semis to, to be better. Um, and to go all the way was amazing and, and a lot of that rest on her shoulders. So to get that accolade now of, of captain, I think she'll, she'll do a good job. Is the Australian and New Zealand rivalry back to where it was? I think so. And I think it always will be. Even these games, I played in a game where we got thumped by Aussie by 23. I think that was in Newcastle. It was the most horrific game in netball. We got absolutely pumped. But there were stages in that game that, you know, you still have that rivalry. It doesn't feel like it's 23. Yeah. Like every time you're trying to go for a ball, you know, you've got that individual battle. So I think you'll always have it, even if the margins are bigger. But for a spectator point of view, yeah, I think you know, it's great. It's great to have those close games, whether it goes Australia's way or whether it goes New Zealand's way, because we need that in our sport, because unfortunately we don't have the countries that other sports have, you know, on a global stage mm. playing our game of netball. And so to have that rivalry keeps people watching our sport and playing our sport. If you could, if you had, if you went back and you said, right, I would like to play as a goaler alongside an Australian goaler, like, so let's put rivalries aside and all that sort of thing. Imagine if you could go, right, I'm going to play with, she's got to be Australian. Who would it be? Oh, that's quite tough because Australia's had some amazing shooters and it depends if I'm, if I'm at goal shoot, I'd like probably Shirelle. Um, if I was at goal attack, maybe even Coxie behind me. Yeah, okay. Moving grow Coxie, not a Vicky Wilson or a Um Possibly, two... possibly Vicky, Vicky but I actually probably think Catherine Cox may have had I don't know, this is off the top of my head, but at Goal Street may have had higher did she have higher stats? Oh, I don't want to say because Vicky will come through this screen and kill me if I get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably sending me an email or stalking me on Facebook. I don't know. Yeah, like I guess it's hard, isn't it? Because I kind of played through so many, with so many different eras of people. Like I played with Tanya Cox and, you know, that era when she was finishing her career um, to, you know, some of these young guns that are still out there. Um, well, they were young guns in my time, but now yeah. obviously they're the old guns in the teams. Yeah. But um, so when I first come in, yeah, Vicky was playing. So I actually forgot about Vicky. Oh, God, that's even worse. Yeah. Um, but no, I think Coxie with a height. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll cover it that way. And if you could be coached by someone in Australia, who would it be? Oh, Norma. I love Norma. Um, I have quite a good... We met up a few times for a couple of wines, of course. Um, just love her honesty. And um, it would be really cool to be coached by her, actually. Yeah, she's, uh, she's been an absolute highlight, I can tell you, on Gordy's Gas Bags. <laughs> As told a couple of stories that no one had ever heard before, so it was terrific. Hey, Don's big, big thank you to you for giving up your time and having a chat. It's actually been lovely. I I've, I've, didn't need the glove. I placed it No, down. see, I'm not that scary, am no, I? And do you no. know that the amazing thing is either my kids are playing games on the other electronics or they're actually doing work because they haven't interrupted once. <laughs> This could be a minute. We should chat more often and they do actually yeah. work. I'd love to, to hang out and have a beer with you one day. So if I ever get an international licence again and can come across, I'll come down the deer farm and we'll have a, have a wine or ten and, and have a chat. I'd love to do that. Yeah, that sounds perfect. As soon as those uh, borders are open, get on a plane. All right. Now I'm going to throw you a challenge. Two challenges. Challenge oh, number no. one, I have no idea whether you've been watching Gordy's Gas Bags. But at the end of every episode, you have to give me some sort of karaoke. So I know that you would have loved a pub. Don't go away. <laughs> you would have loved a pub and a karaoke song every once in a while. I can't hear you. You'll have to repeat. <laughs> oh. Can't hear? Do you know that I only heard the end of it about the I only heard the end of it about the karaoke and I I joked about this before that it was going to cut out when I had to sing, but it actually was. So the first part of your request was what? <laughs> You've got a car have you got a go-to karaoke song? No, we don't do karaoke in Balfour. We barely have a shop. <laughs> All right, go back to the early years after, let's say after you, 
You know, you won a, a steel final. There was seven of ten. Surely you downed a couple from the cup and then got up and sang a tune or two. I'm trying to think. We had a, um, we had a sting song that used to ricochet out of the, um, the aftermatch, which was normally packed, but that was just normally someone screaming on the mic going, March on, Southern Sting. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, who's, who's your favourite artist? What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to Cooper's Mix. Cooper, where's your songs? Memories. <laughs> He's learning memories on the guitar. Oh, nice. Doesn't mean I can sing it. Should I get one of them to play a song? Yeah, get Cooper. Instead of me having to sing it. Yeah, let's get Cooper. Cooper. We'll pause this while we get Cooper set up. So we're back. Cooper's all set up. This is uh, Donna's 11-year-old son who's just started a little bit of work on the guitar. Hi, Coops. How are you going? Good. All right. You ready? <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to you. You're, you're doing a little bit of tuning karaoke, kind of whatever we want to call it, on behalf of your mother. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, handing it over to Cooper. Well done. You know what? That's what we call a four chord song. And with four chords, you can play hundreds of songs. Take it from a guitar player. So that's the beginning of Wagon Wheel. So he's learning. Yeah, it's better than me. It's very good. If only we could get you to sing along with it. Or well, maybe on the next one. I'll oh, practice the word. You're getting an invite back. That's even funnier. <laughs> Well, maybe you might not want me back, so that's good no. that I won't have to sing. No, when I come over for a drink, we'll be doing karaoke through to the wee hours of the morning, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, here's challenge number two, all right? So, Nolene handballed it to you. Who, Thanks, Noles. Yeah, good, God love Noles. Who, who do you reckon I should catch up with next? Oh, so you've got a whole week of Kiwis, haven't you? Let's go. We've got um, a whole week of Kiwis. I reckon you should go back to the most amazing player, one of the amazing players for New Zealand netball, a defence player who also coached. I think you should go to Yvonne Willering, actually. Oh, God, Yvonne. She's the Norma Plummer of New Zealand. Do you reckon? Do you reckon yeah. she is? Do, are, yeah, you are you scared? Are you scared? No, no, no. I've actually done a little bit of work with Yvonne, so I'm not scared of her, but she's, she's got the quirky nature of the plum stuff. So, actually, it's a good one. It's a good one. And the good news is I've got her mobile number. That means she's not going to get out of it. Good job, you, Donna Wilkins. No problem. I think Yvonne will be great, especially right. at the singing. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you she'll give me nothing. But anyhow, so there you go. Challenge has been set. I'm going out to Donna, uh, going out to Yvonne Willering tomorrow night. It'll be Wednesday night. I can't wait. Uh, you're a champion. Thanks for joining us on Gordy's Gas Bags. Well done to Cooper. All the best down there on the farm. Stay safe. And I'll see you in NZ for a while. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Gordy. Thank you, mate. Take care. See you later.